Hey everyone, it's Ellis, and this is going to be the Mordekaiser rework first impressions video. This is actually something I've been looking forward to doing for quite a while, ever since it was announced, mostly because I'm actually really sad. Uh, Mordekaiser, for people who don't know or haven't been following me for a long time, he was my first real main champion inside of League when I first came into the scene in Season 4. Um, so I'm actually personally really sad to see him go. I do not know entirely about his kit yet. I have seen his splash art and I've seen images of him and um, let's just get right into it. So already, I mean, I, I love it. I, I love the aesthetics of the champion. Um, I'm going to pause right here. And basically when, when I'm looking at him, um, I feel like it's what you would imagine when, when you read about Mordekaiser's lore and when you think about what he's supposed to do. I always envision Mordekaiser as sort of like uh, Arthas or the Lich King from World of Warcraft. Um, and to see him donning similar uh, suit or armor um, I think is actually really cool. I'm excited to see what they do with the skins. Um, something that I've been talking about for a really long time is that I was very sad that League didn't truly have like a Death Knight character, uh, a character that felt like a, a true melee champion and a mage. And I feel like that's really what a Death Knight sort of encompasses. Uh, I know this isn't World of Warcraft or anything, but uh, he already has the Death Knighty vibe to him, and I absolutely love it. So, Q, Darkness, Rise. So it's saying... So, damages nearby enemies and gives Mordekaiser movement speed, I think is really great. Uh, he also does look massive inside of the lane. I'm curious what his base stats are. I don't know if they're publicly available yet. I will actually check really quick on the second monitor. Um, to see maybe if he is out on PBE already and maybe his stats are available. If they are, then I will end up taking a look at them. They are on PBE, so I will take a look at them as soon as this uh, initial reaction is over. So the Q reminds me of the old Mace of Spades. I, I don't know if that was actually what its name was, but I believe if you had a single target... Um, May, I, or I, it, it sort of shattered and did these like three little spikes that went in every direction, right? So saying that it, he absorbs damage taken and that he can consume it to basically turn it into health, I, I actually think this is superior to his old passive, I guess, um, because that, that looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, and it also gives him naturally built-in sustain. So I'm assuming that life as a resource or anything isn't really going on with him anymore, and obviously we can't see a mana pool, so already, I mean, this is shaping up to look like a great champion. So that grants passive magic pen. I'm unsure what the amount is, but I think that's awesome. That's the death grip from the, or it's essentially the death grip. Uh, it's it's Swain's thing without actually having to land the skill shot because if you manage to miss that, then I mean, you probably just uh, something just happened to you. Um, I think that ability is fantastic. It looks amazing and it definitely already has synergy with his kit. So. So oh, so it consumes them and banishes them to the Shadow Realm until they end up respawning. So obviously this scales with Game Timer, which I think is a little bit weird. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, if you kill someone at level 6, you'll still get a little bit of utility out of it before they end up respawning if you're in a 1v2 or a 2v2 or something. Um, obviously, I, su I suppose this could be a little bit lackluster compared to his old Ghost um, super late game where you used to be able to roam around with it for a very, very long time, and then obviously the dragon. Uh, the most interesting thing for me about the Realm of Death is, can it be uh, broken? Can you QSS it? Can you, uh, re response to, can you, can you respond to the animation of Mordekaiser uh, doing that? Can you respond to that with Zhonya's uh, or Stopwatch or something and actually cancel the ability? Um, if you can't, this makes Mordekaiser really interesting against protect the X comps because he can just simply remove them from the game but it also makes him a really scary threat regardless almost at any stage in a team fight where he can basically just say oh, okay 
that carry's really fed, let me just take them with me for a second. And if he's still an AP off-tank juggernaut that's building Zhonya's, it might not even mean that he has to die inside of his death realm if he just sort of lives for a little while and then Zhonya's himself. And he just basically Malzahar ults your primary carry for an extended period of time, which I think that's super insane. Wow, that damage. Oh, these skins look really cool. Except that one. That one that that's definitely that's when you're you're going down a panel, right? You're you're on like the bachelorette or something, and then you get to the very end and you just dread you're dreading Friday. You're going through the days, you got Monday, you got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, look, you got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then you get to Friday, and you think that one's going to be a banger, but <laughs> absolutely not. Alright, so that was it for his abilities. I'm going to take a peek now at these right here. Um, so Darkness Rise and 8, Mordekaiser's basic attacks deal bonus magic damage. After three uh, abilities or basic attacks and champion, Darkness Rise deals Damage to nearby enemies and gives 10% movement speed. He only has 325, so giving tier 1 boots um, isn't super powerful. I'm hoping that his PBE stats end up getting changed. Oh, actually, maybe these aren't the PBE stats because these numbers haven't really moved yet. So if he has higher MS or if he has like 340, 345 or something, I, I guess this is actually potentially scary um, because just at, at that point, it means that even Mordekaiser with tier 1 boots is potentially really threatening to a lot of champions that are very slow. Uh, but nonetheless, Darkness Rises looks really cool. Obliterate is on a four-second cooldown at max rank. So if he ends up having massive CDR, then I'm assuming that he has an auto-reset, which is really scary as well, but obviously I don't know his ratios. Indestructible, 10-second uh, passive, fills the bar with 25% of damage taken and damage dealt up to 30%. Of Mordekaiser's maximum health, the bar has a minimum of 5% of Mordekaiser's max health. After first cast, casting once generates a shield for 4 seconds, consuming the amount in the bar. After 1.5 seconds, the shield decays at a rate of 1.5% base health per second. After 0.25 seconds, he can recast the ability. Second cast, Mordekaiser consumes 50% of the shield for health. I mean, at 40% CDR, this is really insane um because it, it's just a steroid that i don't really know how you stop and then again depending on his numbers is this going to become another champion that ends up using gunblade or something and thus his sustain is just rivaling atrox or something to that nature and how movable is he truly in a side of a side lane death's grass passive mordekaiser gains 25 percent magic penetration so that is a really really big number uh, to have extremely early on, and it might end up, you, usually when people have built-in, um, you know, ratios or something, it does often enable them to go into the tank route. Uh, cooldown 24 to 12 seconds scaling, so at max rank, this is obviously a really, really scary CC um, that can make it very difficult, I guess, to run away from him. So I'm getting a very scary juggernauty type vibe that he's basically just everything that Garen wishes he could be, um, but better. Uh, so, but the thing about this, though, is that, um, how realistic is his kit in, inside of a competitive environment? And I think that a lot of that comes down to, um, this realm of death, cast time half a second, creates a death realm around the target of champion during which he and the target are blocked to move out. The death realm remain, oh, so it's a prison, you can't just run away from it. Death Realm remains for 7 seconds or until one of the affected champions dies. Units between different realms cannot interact with each other and are seen as spirits. Anything that Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, anything that happens inside the Death Realm remains inside it, and units are destroyed at the end. Structures exist in all realms at the same time. For duration, Mordekaiser steals 10% of the cur uh, target's current armor, magic resist, health, attack damage, ability power, and attack speed. So he's anti-tank. Uh, if he kills his target, he consumes their soul, keeping their partial stats until... They respawn. It doesn't say what the partial stats are, um, but he has an anti-tank nature, so I guess he's meant to mix up the tank matchups, but maybe also be able to contend against squishies. Uh, so the way that I'm thinking about his kit is he's going to be decided by numbers, which is a little bit unfortunate. He he doesn't seem to have the thing going for him with uh, like Atrox, which 
Atrox has terrain scaling and whatnot. Uh, Akali has pseudo terrain scaling. Um, Aurelia has the ability to to jump all around the uh, the map. Um, Silas has terrain scaling to a different uh, to a certain extent, but he also has different options and mix ups available. Mordekaiser still seems relatively straightforward, and that does worry me because it means that if his numbers are out of check, he doesn't have something gimmicky that can allow him to stay inside of the game um, and still be useful. But also, what lane does he end up going into? Uh, which I, I think that obviously really matters on his on his base stats and whatnot. Basic attack still bonus magic damage. Uh, so I, he is still going to be going magic, I'm assuming. Although that's not always the case, just because Riot puts a lot of uh, magic damage things inside of the champion's kit doesn't mean that they always end up itemizing uh, for straight on magic. They can end up itemizing pure tank or off tank, like I mentioned. Um, but... With the AoE on Obliterate, uh, and it being such a short cooldown, and I'm assuming this is definitely the one that you max first, which means you get this at rank 5, um, with CDR and whatnot, this could be really good for the jungle. But the thing that worries me about the jungle is Runic Echoes, um, and how realistic is it uh, on him as a champion. Um, alternatively, does I, I, I'm assuming that he just ends up as a top laner. Uh, Death's Grasp is really scary. I guess that could make him really scary against mages, but... It seems probably not realistic inside of mid lane. One of the things that's really annoying for me, though, is that he doesn't really have a ranged attack anymore that's spammable. And so a lot of matchups that used to be manageable and good for Mordekaiser before just isn't. And I'm assuming that it means that champions that used to bully the old Mord are going to bully him a little bit more now. But Death's Grasp and Indestructible might make it a mix-up for some of the matchups where he could potentially be favored now. So... Um, the, the, the sad thing about this is that it's giving me a Yorick vibe where he he's essentially going to act as a stat checker. The one thing that prevents him from be, having the Yorick vibe is the Realm of Death, the ability to just remove uh, the most fed target on the enemy team. And obviously Mordekaiser is coming in as a team composition disruptor, and right now I'm talking about competitive. And what I mean by that is if you notice that the enemy team is heavily reliant on one champion at the end of the draft phase and you're on red side, uh, maybe, you know, uh, fourth pick or fifth pick at that uh, uh, at that point you could just potentially pick more if you realize that they're going to try to just protect um, one champion or two champions but then also when push comes to shove you can also temporarily remove one of the primary carries from the enemy team and let your teammates do a 4v4 so I'm assuming that he has obviously a lot of synergy with engage type of team compositions um, things that want to go very fit you know balls to the wall very aggressive um, Obviously, a champion like Kled comes to mind, Sejuani, inside of the jungle, engaging Zac, um, which is another magic champion, um, champions that want to get in there and assassinate. Um, the fact that he also has to deal the damage initially to get Darkness Rise to activate is concerning, because one of the only ways that current Mordekaiser can operate um, in high MMR is by truly utilizing his W to maximum effectiveness in order to get the key movement speed at the right time, and also inside of teamfights. So... I don't know what is going to end up going on there. I'm really, really worried about this rework. What, what I'm imagining is, is if they want to sell a lot of skins and they want a lot of people to be happy, his numbers are going to be broken. So we're actually going to have a World of Warcraft uh, Wrath of the Lich King release where uh, you're going into five-man dungeons and the tank, healer, um, and DPS are all, in fact, Death Knight. Um, and if you happen to be the lone healer that queues into four of them, they're just going to leave you behind and tell you to, you know, get carried throughout the instance. And that'll probably be a fun experience. So that's one of my main concerns about Mord is that this kit reeks heavily that it's reliant on numbers. And if the numbers are just overpowered, then he's going to have to be nerfed. Um, unless they adjust something with his kit. If perhaps Death's Grasp was a lower cooldown, um... And it gave him more opportunities and windows to trade that would be a little bit more acceptable. Um, the fact that his ultimate doesn't outright deal damage is also a little bit problematic. Um, because it... Well, I guess one of the things interesting about this is if Mordekaiser is getting ganked, he can basically just summon Exodia and uh, take the jungler or you with him to the Shadow Realm and kill one of you, and then come back and handle the other guy. And your teammate just sort of has to sit around there and watch. So it's sort of like uh, Miroku. Or is it Miroku? Uh, you know, he, like, opens up his hand and he drags you somewhere or something. Probably not. You know what? I'm getting the lore wrong here. But nonetheless, um, 
I love him aesthetically. I absolutely love aesthetically how he looks. There definitely needs to be an Arthas Lichbane, Mordekaiser skin. I'm just really worried about how realistic is it for him. He's probably going to be really powerful against tanks. He's going to be really good against bruiser-type champions. I'm assuming in top lane, except for the, the bruiser champions, which are anti-bruiser. Um, so he looks like a, a, a tank killer by nature. If he ends up in the jungle, that's somewhere where he could end up potentially being useful regardless of his numbers. And again, that primarily just comes down to Death's Grasp and the Realm of Death. Um, basically being the, the two key things that can keep him somewhat relevant. And this used to be a way to evaluate support, supportive champions back in the past, where champions that didn't need a lot of resources or gold in order to be effective, and obviously Realm of Death doesn't actually require a lot of gold in order to be effective, um, even if it does mean that uh, he's very oppressive. So I would actually hope that maybe they could bring back the dragon, um, if they would keep the dragon, it would still include the side minigame for Mordekaiser. I think that would be fantastic. Um, I think that would be really cool. If they somehow brought back Realm of Death to have the dragon, uh, passive, where you can get the, the dragon ghost, so. Uh, it's looking like this is definitely gonna be a jungler or a top laner, um, but it's gonna come down to his numbers, which I just currently don't have right now, so. That's it for the rework first impression. I think that he will be absolutely busted if the numbers are there. Um, but otherwise, his kit isn't quite good enough to stand up in mid-top or ADC role. Um, and the only things that he has going for his kit to be somewhat relevant is going to be the jungle and supportive roles. So, hope that you guys enjoyed the rework video here. I'm really looking forward to playing Mordekaiser as soon as he's out. And uh, this looks really cool.